Good evening, everyone. The top two teams in the Upper Peninsula Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association Little Five Girls Basketball pull a meet with a regional title at stake. Number two, Superior Central challenges number one, Forest Park at Kingsford High School. A sellout crowd, oh, not a problem there. Forest Park, Superior Central, both fired up and both ready to go. First quarter, Brooke Passanen, Vanessa Freeberg. She's launching from three and knocks that one down. Six or five, four, I should say. Cougars next. Teslin Tinner to Brooke Passanen, launching from behind the arc. Yes, she finished with 19. Cougars up 8 6. Game winding down in the first quarter, though. Lexi Gusser just kind of throws one up there, and Lexi Gusser can make those shots. 18 12 Trojans after one. In the second, Freeberg drains another three. But that stopped a good run by Forest Park at 15 to 1. Then Gusser blocks the shot and goes coast to coast. She misses the layup, but that's because she's padding her offensive rebound stats again, puts it up and in. She ended up with 43 in the contest. Sierra Robarge had eight points for the Trojans, and they win their third straight regional, 69 to 52. Head coach Jeff Surgeon says his team is ready for their next challenge, Posen. Right now, um, we're just going to try to regroup, go take a look and find out what Posen's about. I know they have a big girl that's excellent, um, and the kids keep themselves focused. They're, they're a very driven team. They've set their goals at the beginning of the year. Their goal was to get to Lansing, and we're one step closer now, and we're, God, we hope we can help and uh, you know represent the UP. That's what we're trying to do, be the best we can. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of my team. We looked inside a lot when we had the smaller Teslin. Um, on me and um, we did a great job looking inside and even outside shots Sierra Robarge they weren't afraid to shoot and as a team that's what we got to do we got to be able to take advantage of those opportunities so I'm really proud of them. We know there's 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 a target on our back we know there's some pressure but number one thing we got to have fun out there and we got to be reminded of that every day. The Trojans are headed to the quarterfinals in Sault Ste. Marie next Tuesday against Posen. Both teams were undefeated. Let's show you how Posen arrived at that point as they were taking on the Brimley base tonight down in Pelston. And Brimley would start reasonably well early. Hannah Vesela to Alyssa Graham. She knocks down the triple. And again for the Bays, getting double team. Carrie Chartrand manages to get it out to Vesla, who finds Graham again for the basket. And the Brimley fans were reasonably happy. But Posen would strike back. They not only have one Hinska, Jenna, they have two, and that's Corinne. She averages about 27 points and 10 rebounds per game. Cami Latula will post inside for two. And Posen went on to win this one 56 to 37. So undefeated Forest Park, undefeated Posen next Tuesday. Tuesday, Sault Ste. Marie, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Central. Now let's go to Escanaba, St. Ignis in the regional final in Class C against Lantz. First quarter action, Kelly Wright wanted to make sure she started well. Yep, I would say hitting a three would do just that. Still in the first, Emily Hensman back to right, four, three right in front of us. She ended up with 29 on the night. Purple Hornets trying to stay close. Kelsey Ross will loft that three-pointer in very nicely, but St. Ignace led 45-18 at the half. Lonsdow did not quit. Swanson to Abby Hendrickson for the layup. And then Swanson will get around right, under right, and puts that one up and in. She ended up with 25-22 in the second half, but check out the touch pass right there from right to Abby Ostman. She had 15. St. Ignace, your winner, 81-58. And the Saints were impressed by the Purple Hornets' heart. I thought the game went uh, pretty good. I mean, it's nice when you're shooting well. Um, they were a good physical team, so I mean... It's all around good game. I thought we all played good, and I'm proud of them. We worked our butts off the last, the last few weeks with coach and everything. So uh, hats off to Lance. I thought the second half they came out just not willing to give up, and you know what? Good for them. I mean, I just I couldn't be more proud of our kids. But you know what? Lance does not have anything to shake their head about because they really came out and never gave up, and that's a true testament to a good team. So St. Ignace will take on McBain next Tuesday, and that game will be at Gaylord High School in one of the Class C quarterfinals. Let's go to the scoreboard. Oh, Menominee was oh so close tonight. The Maroons lost the Sparta 35-34 in Class B. The Spartans made a running lap with about four seconds to go to take the lead. 
Women's college basketball, Coastal Georgia over Bethel, Tennessee, 74-73. That's an upset in the Southern States Athletic Conference tournament opener at, yes, Montgomery, Alabama. On to Noggins, Janelle Tucker had a key hoop down the stretch for the Mariners. Wisconsin Green Bay wins its 16th straight conference title, downing Oakland 67-52. Escanaba's Olivia Nash had 10 points and 6 rebounds for the Grizzlies. In Big Ten women's tournament action, Michigan 82, Indiana 57, St. Ignace. Nicole and Blatt finished with 15 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 3 blocks. And I believe the Wolverines take on Michigan State tomorrow. Don't forget, all kinds of information is available on our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. Three Michigan State Spartans have been nominated to the College Football Hall of Fame in 2014, voting to be done a little bit later. Wide receiver Kurt Gibson, before your time. <laughs> Number two, Lorenzo White. Uh, just that much also before, before just, just before your time. And uh, Clinton Jones, almost before my time. He wow. played in the mid-60s. Also, head coach Daryl Rogers from the late 1970s uh, nominated to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. We'll see how that goes down the road.